Of the Matrix video game review. This chronicles the experiences of Ghost and Niobe during the basically all of Matrix Reloaded and even a little before that and just after that film ends and they both play a rather pivotal role in ensuring that Neo's path will be a success. I don't want to waste anyone's time here, so right off the bat I'm going to answer what I would presume to be the two most pertinent questions of anyone considering playing this, whether they're renting or borrowing or buying. This is not a polished product. This does, however, let you do basically anything you would want to in the Matrix universe. At least as of the first two films. Nothing from the third film that is you know, exclusive to the third film. There, I haven't said too much. I haven't spoiled anything about the third film. This is a licensed video game, as you can probably tell by the whole tie-in game with the second movie kind of deal. And pretty much everything that's true about licensed video games is true about this one. It's not a finished product, it's buggy and glitchy, although not as buggy as it could be. They, the bugs aren't, you know, complete game stoppers. The just design and such is very much tied into what the film needed, so there isn't going to be a lot of creativity. And the events taking place in it can't have that big of an impact on the overall plot because you need to you need to be able to not play this game and get the story of the films. The opposite isn't true. If you play this and you don't know the films, you're not going to have any clue what's going on. Basically, the plot takes you across everything that you know, you do see Ghost and Naobi, especially Naobi. Ghost is pretty much a ghost in the film. You do see Naobi a couple of times in Matrix Reloaded. So, basically, those situations, you know, you see in, in the game, you play ex what happened just before that and just after you see her in the film. And other than that, they manage to let the two basically run into everyone in Matrix Reloaded that you meet in the Matrix Reloaded. You know, just everybody. And it does get to be a bit forced and just weird that there would be these... Because about half of the time it doesn't really correspond... It doesn't have anything directly to do with Neo and the other crew of the Nebuchadnezzar. All three of them. Basically, the game is a third-person action shooter. And it also has some driving levels, and you get to pilot a hovercraft. And that's basically the entire gameplay. It's a very short game. You can play as Niobe or Ghost, and there'll be some differences. That's some of the best of the game is when there are, there are differences between their playthroughs. Because when you play as one, you'll see the other doing something in a cutscene, or you'll meet up with them somewhere, and then when you play as them, you'll understand what that was all about, how they got there. And, but anyway, Basically, they take maybe four hours to complete a piece. So you can complete this game in a single day. I know I've done it. Once you've completed it, there is not a lot of replayability, although there is this 
training level that you can unlock. And other than, of course, cheat codes, there are also just codes you can enter for benefits. Basically, weapon drops, meaning you can replay a level, only now there's going to be a cache of weapons in a specific place that you've dropped. You do this through the hacking, and although that part of the game really doesn't last long at all, it is kind of fun, and you have to do a little bit of detective work. It's actually the only part of the game that actually has any puzzles whatsoever. The rest of it is just linear as they get. And there's also no, once you've played it once, I mean, other than the three difficulty settings, there isn't going to be anything to surprise you next time. It doesn't have any randomizing factors. The training level can be pretty fun, and you get to just, you know, enemies are going to keep coming, at least in certain areas they are, and you can just fight and just enjoy yourself. The attraction of this game, other than the, perhaps the DVD quality footage that is indeed shot by the Wachowski Brothers, directed by the Wachowski Brothers, is basically to be able to do what you see the, I guess, the rebels, the Zionists do in the films, at least the first two. And you kind of can. You know, you can run up a wall and do a backflip back off it. You can run along a wall as you shoot. You can not quite dodge bullets, but, you know, attempt to avoid them. Basically, as you just run along, you aren't going to be able to do anything superhuman, but when you hold down the focus key, you can run into a wall and run along it. You can hold down the use key to make these evasive moves in any direction. And you can, and if you jump, you can be firing from the jumping position. And if you already had a gun drawn, your character is going to launch themselves, you know, directly, sort of what Trinity does, you know, off the roof through the window of that building at the beginning of the first movie. And also you can actually hit stuff when you're in focus mode, when you're holding down that key. The focus meter will drain gradually as you're in focus mode. You, it, it fills back up automatically over time or you can gain more by defeating people in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I think also just killing enemies will, you know, get you some more, but especially just focus on the hand-to-hand -hand combat. More on that later. About the aiming. That's another thing you're really going to want to know when playing this game. If you don't hold down the focus key or enter the first-person mode, and the first-person mode does not enable you to move, it's essentially just, for, it's mainly for the sniping, the first person mode. If you don't do that, you're basically not going to hit anything. You can be standing a foot away from an enemy and be emptying half a clip and not hit anything. I don't know, maybe they misheard that line in the first movie about, you know, it's only agents that you can empty entire clips at and not hit anything other than air. Okay, guys, please get that straight next time. Basically, I think what happened was they really wanted you to use the, the martial arts. They didn't want you to rely too much on the guns. Or they didn't want to make it too easy with the guns. So they, there, there are all these half-done things that were supposed to pull it in one way or the other. Because they realized, oh wait, we, you can't actually aim, so we have to do something else. So, you know... When you actually do hit, the enemies die pretty quickly. But then, whenever you... The first time you pick up a gun, it's going to have a full clip. Every single gun you pick... Well, the second time, if it's a dual wield, also a full clip. After that, only a half a clip. You can... And you can't carry that much ammo. If you have two Berettas... That's 
15 bullets, you know, in each. You're gonna have, I think, 40 extra bullets. You can empty them, you know, you can use all your bullets in extremely short space of time. But yeah, so basically, you can't really aim other than that. And that's really all there is to it. You just have to use the focus mode or be really, really close or just use them as part of a martial arts move. The martial arts system is at least interesting. Basically, you have a punch, a kick, and a counter key. There aren't really any combos, although you do have a couple of special moves that I'm not sure the enemy can actually counter or defend against, or certain of, certain enemies can. Obviously, the agents, yes, you do get to fight agents, are a bit tougher. It's really satisfying to defeat an agent in combat. In fact, it's really satisfying to defeat them pretty much any way you spin it, although there are a couple of times where you're just supposed to defeat him, and that's of course less. It's more fun when it's just you find out how to defeat him, even though it wasn't necessarily necessary to defeat him, but it's just, you know, it's a good, hard fight, and yeah. Basically, if you hold, if, if you press punch or kick, there are four different punches or kicks, at least, just from a standing position, based on which arrow key, which direction you indicate at the same time. So there'll, for example, be a kick that, you know, sends them backwards, or there'll be a kick that goes for the legs, there'll be a kick that goes for the face. And holding down the counter defense, counter or block key. Basically, if you hold it down, the enemy, again, other than agents and stronger opponents, the, the enemy isn't going to be able to hit you with martial arts. Also, when you do use martial arts, the enemies tend not to fire on you, so that's nice at least. Especially because they can take a while to take someone down using martial arts. Not like, you know, minutes, except for the boss fights, but still long enough that you could eat a whole lot of lead while you're standing there doing it. Basically, you can block most attacks, but if you time the block just right, you will, you know, Goldilocks effect, you will get to do a counterattack, and that and you don't actually have to press anything else, you'll just do a counterattack. And the enemies can also do counterattacks, so you won't always want to be just entirely aggressive. With that said, usually the fights are pretty easy other than when it's against boss enemies, where it sometimes gets abusively difficult, especially on the higher difficulty settings. But really, you know, for a Matrix game, for a game that has a martial arts, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to use martial arts. Also, once you've completed the game and you use the hacking, you can actually unlock a sword, a katana. If, again, detective work. And that's just so much fun. And it's not like one of those deals where you just get to swing it. No, it's choreographed moves. Basically, every time you do a disarm move or counterattack, which is basically the same thing. If the enemy has a weapon, you can disarm them by using the counter button. You'll whip out the sword and do one of... There's at least three different attacks, and it's just a ton of fun to see. Now, the... The shootouts can be fun, although, other than that you can't really hit anything, you also basically don't aim. I think what it was was that this is essentially a port, or, yeah, it, it was ported from the console versions, and the console versions, you don't appear to be able to aim. So basically, you just indicate the basic direction of your guns, and you fire, and if you're 
in focus mode, you might hit something. The game decides what to hit, what to aim for, and it does not have very good instincts. Even if the enemy is currently hiding, the gun will still go for that enemy, even if there's another enemy close by that isn't at all hiding. Or if there's something between you and that enemy, you know, where you would never actually pull the trigger and waste ammo, the game will. In general, the AI, especially the one on your side, I hope that's just a coincidence, has really, really lousy instincts. The... But yeah, so sometimes you can be... Sometimes you'll even be aiming in another direction and it'll still hit. Like someone will essentially not even be in your you know, line of fire, line of sight, sight line, whatever, anymore, and you'll still hit them somehow. The guns are pretty cool. They've, you know, like with the movies, they chose some really, really cool ones. In fact, like with the movies, is really a headline for this game. They really, really wanted it to be just like the movies. And, in part, it's just kind of impressive how much they did pull off, because the Wachowskis just wanted a certain product, and they didn't really... I don't know how much they know about video game developing, but I don't think they realized how much time actually goes into it. So, what they actually asked, I think they pretty much got. And that's why everything is so hurried, so rushed. You know, everything is just barely there. There are a couple of features in this game that you use, like, once. For example, you can crawl, you can climb on a pipe, you know, just grab a pipe hanging from the ceiling. You can grab it with all four limbs and just, you know, move along. And from there, you can actually be hanging from your legs and be shooting at someone. I don't think I'm exaggerating in saying I'm pretty sure you only do this once in the entire game. Not even sure you do it as both characters. I think you only do it as one character. That's it. There's also, you know, you can wall hug and shoot from cover, but it's a horrid system. It's a really bad cover fire system, you know. I mean, this was before that sort of thing got to be really common, so yeah, they were some of the first to develop it, but it really sucks. I mean, I wouldn't have minded if they hadn't put it in here. It just... I mean, most of the time, you'll be better off just rushing at the enemy, just using the focus mode. You know, it also makes you slightly faster. Anyway, the... About the martial arts, I should also say, there is a real nice variety of moves. Different circumstances get... For example, also the disarm move, you have... I'd say at least five different ones, based on how exactly you approach your opponent. Anyway, the... The cinematography and editing of... I mean, this is... You know, thankfully not so much during gameplay. It's in the... The pre-rendered look like crap cutscenes and the scripted sequences that look slightly better. That's where... You know, it really looks like it's right out of the movies, although some of the stuff... You know, they kind of redo stunts that they do in the movies and they kind of look lamer, or, or at least it's, it's the lamer versions. For example, early on, you're getting a package from the post office. Okay, I swear it's more exciting than it sounds. You're being attacked by you know, the police and SWAT teams along the way, and it's the package that might win the war. I, I swear it's not as boring as that just sounded. And just after you grab the package, oops, spoiler alert, some SWAT are going to shoot grenades at you. 
and at one point your character is going to do a cartwheel, grab the grenade, and toss it back. If you've seen the movies, you might recognize that from something, although it's not a grenade in that situation. And here it's just kind of lame. You know, where in the movie, it's one of those things where, you know, you think it's awesome, and yeah. And also under the banner headline of Like the Movies, I already pointed out that you meet every character, you meet and or fight basically every character from the second movie, and go to every environment, pretty much. You also just experience everything that you see in the first movie pretty much, and the second movie to an extent. I mean, you know, do note, you're not playing as Neo, so not every single thing, but the game, almost at the very beginning of the game, it's nighttime and you're running through these slums as you're being chased across rooftops by an agent when you're headed for the heartland. I'm, I'm sorry, does this sound at all familiar to you? Because it, it should if you watched the first movie. And the whole game is like that. Pretty much everything is just, I mean, there are a couple of exceptions, but I don't know, maybe they just didn't have that many ideas, or maybe they just really wanted you to remind you of how cool it was in the first movie. And I'm not saying it's not cool here, too, but it does really smack of, you know, hey, remember how much you liked this scene when you saw it? Now, the... The basic control interface, the first thing you'll want to do is actually change, because I don't know why, but when you install the game, it just... It places the punch key I believe at the same as the same key as the fire weapon key. I don't know why I've never been able to play with it like that. I I would say that you know presumably you'd want because if you just press the trigger and you know fire primary weapon if you press that key and you don't have a weapon drawn you're going to draw your weapon. And your weapons aren't exactly useless during martial arts. You can actually execute executions. Yeah, that was phrased poorly. Apologies. And, you know, and also, you know, even though you might be using one, you know, if, if you are firing your guns and then suddenly an enemy comes really close, you might want to be able to just instantly be using martial arts instead. So. I would say it makes more sense to have them, you know, different ones. But anyway, the basic control setup isn't bad and it's pretty easy to get into and to keep track of. Now, for the levels where you're driving, basically if you play as one character, you're the gunner, if you place the other, and you know, the car is controlled by an AI. If you play as the other character, you're the driver, and you can hold down shift to activate the gunner. Regardless of which play, you're gonna be thinking, I can do a better job than this other guy. And even if both your arms are broken, you're right. They're just really really bad. I'm gonna start with the gunner AI because that's less of a heartache. Basically you just you hold down the key and even if he isn't shooting at anything you can hold it down and he won't and with him not shooting at anything and still the meter will drain and eventually he'll have to go back in to reload. I don't know why. I, I don't know. He. Then again, it is Ghost, and he does seem a little obsessive about his checking his guns, so, yeah. By the way, that is like his defining character trait. He quotes philosoph philosoph philosophers, that's it. Yeah, the first time you see him, he's quoting a philosopher, stating that that's why he keeps reloading his guns. 
Anyway, you don't decide what he shoots at. So he can be shooting at a car that's just exploded. Or he can be not shooting when you're thinking, oh, come on, he's not that far away. You can shoot him from here, you can hit him from here, and he won't be shooting. And the meter will drain, and yeah. On the lower difficulties, this is not that big of a deal, because you can still make it, but it's just annoying. It does. It, it feels like, you know, he's not a team player. He doesn't really want to pull his weight around here, and that's just annoying. Now, the... Driver AI. I'm not kidding. On this most recent playthrough, there was a time when she drove smack into an obstacle in front of her. Then she backed right into something else. Then ahead. Then back. And she just kept going back and forth between these two. And I'm not... It's, it's not like they were entire walls. They were just solitary pillars. And that's it. She just kept... I gotta imagine she was gunning right for them. I don't even know how my pursuers didn't, you know, completely waste me during that time. I don't know, maybe they were just off-screen laughing their heads off. I don't know. Anyway, she's bad. Niobe is not a good driver when you're not Niobe. Sometimes it's like passable, but when it's bad, I mean, it's to the point where it's basically you have to be lucky. You have to be lucky enough that the driver AI feels like doing its job. Otherwise, you can't complete, complete these levels. You don't have any control over the driver when you're playing as Ghost and Niobe is the driver. That's, that's it. You know, so you may have to play it several times through no fault of your own. Thankfully, the levels do tend to be short. That's another thing. This game, the levels, Sometimes really, really short. I'm not kidding, there's a level you can complete in the space of seconds. I, we're talking like five seconds. Less even if you just want, you know. I think the point of that level is that if you want, you can explore it. Because it is, you know, a location you also see in the movie. But, yeah, I, I don't know why they would make such a short one. The level design is reasonable, but there's a lot of repetitiveness, and it gets really strangely intricate sometimes. It's like labyrinthine here and there, and it doesn't seem like it really needed to be. It's just, I don't know, to, to have more than one path seem available? I don't know, but there isn't, you know, you can only, there's only the one path to go. I don't know. I should maybe also mention the grenades. They're essentially useless. There are a couple of times where you have to use them, and you do, and that's kind of it, but they're thrown in such a strange arc that you can't really hit what you want and sometimes it'll just hit the ceiling and, you know, hit you instead. Also, the explosions are just extremely humongous. I, I don't know why they did that. Just these huge fireballs. You'd think there was like a car or a lot of gasoline in there for that huge of an explosion. But, yeah. The... DVD quality footage. It does forward the story. It does tell some plot. Again, it doesn't really change anything particularly. It fills in some blanks. There were a couple of things where you watch the movie and you're like, huh? What's going on there? There's something between that, that I don't quite understand and this one kind of fills that in. The quality of the writing is about the same as the second movie, so a lot of bad lines. But, you know, all in all, yeah, it's, it's like the plot of the second movie. It, it can be really forced. They just really wanted this particular sequence of events to occur. The sound quality is not all that good. It's, again, just... Rushed, you know. 
the graphics are reasonable, but there are a lot of small glitches to them, and the faces, they, I think they tried to give a level of expression, but they didn't really get there. Everyone always looks like they have this, just like they're only feeling the one thing, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know, maybe they didn't want to make Keanu Reeves jealous by making, you know, animated actors be better actors than him. Also, some of them, their upper lip is amusingly large. Not unlike, you know, Team America, the Matt Damon dummy, yeah. Maybe not quite as bad, but, but it's still pretty bad. The... Yeah, I suppose that's about it. So yeah, basically, the game can be fun. And if you're willing to put up with some really awkward bits and some stuff that's clearly rushed and not necessarily thought all the way through, and occasionally bad game mechanics in order to, you know, play something Matrix, you know, gameplay that's just like, where you get to do the stuff that they do in the first two Matrix movies, other than maybe Neo at his one nest. This is fun, you know. Don't get me wrong, I personally really enjoyed the game. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.